Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Upper Room Ministries. I thank for if we're all here. It's a privilege and ours an honor to be in the house of the Lord to praise and worship Him. This is the third Sunday of the month. We come here Sundays, starting at 4:30 for Sunday school, five o'clock for prayer, and six o'clock for main message. Brought to you by the Holy Spirit. Like we said, this is. The third Sunday of the month, we are glad for you to join us on live feed and around the world on White Rose Network, Channel 16, and the Bright Star Network in Pakistan, where we're the number one program reaching 44 million people over there, a Muslim denominated country. It's, an, it's pretty exclusive there doing that stuff. Like I said, this is the third Sunday of the month. We have our, our guest speaker, uh, Pastor Howard Dissinger, for a great message. Every, every third Sunday of the month. And the last one was just powerful. I can't wait to hear this one. The first Sunday of the month is the WOW, Women of War, Wisdom of, w women of War, w Women of Wisdom, w Women of Worship, where they give their testimonies and whatever the Lord lay on their heart for that week or the month. The second Sunday, we come here and we have uh, another message from the Assistant Pastor Michael Ganaway, also another powerful one from the Holy Spirit. And then the fourth Sunday is the Prophet James H. Humphrey. Also at the third Friday of every month, we are here at seven o'clock and uh, Rabbi Ed Frankovich is the speaker every Friday. And also Thursday at the end of the month we are here at 7 o'clock where we have a guest speaker. Uh, Tuesdays, we meet Tuesdays for Bible study at Old Country Buffet starting at 5.30 for the meal and 7 o'clock again, 7 o'clock for Bible study. We, uh, the prayer line is is open from 4.30 to 9 p.m. here on Sunday. You can call in at 717-308-7237. That's 717-308-7237. We would like to hear your prayers, and we would love to pray for you, whatever your needs are. Amen. Uh, at this time, we will... If you want to come up and bring your offering, you can do so now or at the end of the service, whichever one you would like to. And uh, Heavenly Father, we are honored for this meeting tonight here. Yes, Lord. For all to hear what the speaker has to say through you. Yes, Father. We are thankful for uh, the tithes, the offerings, and whatever everyone else has to give. And we bless the giver, and we thank you for another beautiful day that you have given us. It is beautiful today, yes. and thank you, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. At this time, does anybody have anything to add? couple of weeks I have been asking for prayer for a good friend of mine. Uh, <clears throat> he's a man of God. He has been really, uh, since he retired, has been really serving the Lord in as many positions as he possibly can. Uh, about two years ago he was diagnosed with cancer in his kidney and he had one of his kidneys removed. Uh, about three months ago they found a tumor on his other kidney and they operated on him on Tuesday. And uh, the outlook on it was kind of up in the air. Well, on Wednesday afternoon, I got a text message from his daughter saying that he came out of the surgery wonderfully and that they only had to remove 10% of his existing kidney. 
And they said that was amazing. They figured he was going to lose somewhere between 30 and 40 percent. So I just want to give thanks uh, for the Lord for being faithful to him and for all of the people that took the time out to pray for him. Anybody else have anything? Then I would like to turn this over to a man that has been a mentor for me for quite a few years, Pastor Howard Dissinger. Amen. Amen. Wow, what a blessing to be here again. And <clears throat> I, uh, I trust that um, <clears throat> the Lord will minister to each one of you this morning, or this evening, I should say. And uh, let me open up with prayer. Jesus. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for your anointing. I uh, thank you for your presence in this room. It is hallowed. It is glorious. Yes, yes. It is mighty. Amen. I thank you, Lord, that we have access to the throne of grace. I thank you that we can enter into the courts of praise. Yes. I thank you, Lord, that Jesus has done it all. I thank you, Lord, that he's here. And I thank you, Lord, that he draws near to us as we draw near to him. And Lord Jesus, I'm asking you to come now and do what you do so well. Touch your church, bless your church, bless your bride, wherever they are, here or abroad, it does not matter. The hand of the Lord is not too short. It can reach you, the farthest parts of the earth, it can reach you now. And I say to you right now, the hand of the Lord is touching you, not only all of you here in this room, but the hand of the Lord is reaching out to those on this earth. That God's arm, His hand, is outstretched. And I receive the hand of God. I love the hand of God. And I love the presence of God. And we welcome the kingdom here on this earth, Lord God. We welcome the glory of the Lord in this room. Yes. We thank you for the voice of the living God. We thank you for the power and the presence. We thank you for this anointing that comes through you. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. And be a blessing, Lord God, to all of us here. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So I like, uh, the Bible says, uh, we are to stir up the gift of God inside of us. Amen. That's not my message, it's just the appetizer. Uh, we are to stir up the gift of God inside of us. That's what the Apostle Paul told his protege, he told uh, Timothy, stir up that gift that you receive by the laying on of hands. And I'm telling you, there are folks in this room and folks that are watching wherever you are, you had lay hands laid on you and they were not ordinary hands. They were extraordinary hands because they were moving by the hand and the spirit of the living God. And when God has laid hands on you and has anointed you, he has not changed his mind. The Bible says the gifts and callings of God are without repentance yes. hallelujah yes, god, when god releases a thing it, it does not come back to him void whatever he's begun in you the bible says he will be faithful to complete what he's begun in you he is faithful and i'm telling you that some of you here and some of you watching wherever you are god is letting you know he's going to finish what he started he is faithful he's got you and he will bring you through because he cannot fail Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we need to stir up this gift inside of us uh, because when we do, then we're able to position ourselves to be an influence to those around us. Amen. Jesus was always an influence to those around him. Amen. When he moved by the Holy Spirit, they could not resist him. Uh, when they would try to come and oppose him, when he would speak, they would leave dumbfounded, and they would go back and tell their higher-ups, we never heard someone speak like that. Now that's when you're moving by the Holy Ghost. If you want to move by the flesh, have at it. But I want to move by the Spirit. You know, yes. Smith Wiggleworth said, he used to say, I may start in the flesh, but I always end in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. We've yeah. got to end in the Spirit. Amen. We've got to stir up the Holy Ghost inside of us. Hallelujah. There's a fire burning within us, yes. and God is calling for that fire to be kindled. Yes. God, you know, the Bible makes it very clear that God would rather have you hot or cold, not lukewarm. I hope we don't have any lukewarm folk here, because God doesn't want the lukewarm stuff. He wants it good and hot. 
Amen. So God wants you to stir up the fire, stir up the gift inside of you. The gift of God inside of you can do all kinds of things beyond what you can think, imagine, or even ask, according to the Bible says, and according to the power at work where? Inside of you. God is dwelling inside of you. Let him have his way. Let him come forth through you. The Son of God was always speaking by the authority of God. And God was always confirming the word by working through the Son of God. And how about it? We should also be the same. Amen. Can I get a hallelujah here? Hallelujah. So that's the appetizer. I like to have appetizers, don't you? Yeah. My wife and I go out. Uh, I won't name the restaurant because I don't want to give free advertising, but we, uh, <laughs> we always like to get the appetizer. Amen? Amen, amen? And I know you're probably watching, so amen. I know I heard you just say amen. So, um, so uh, yeah, we like the appetizer, you know? Now, sometimes when you have the appetizer, it kind of spoils the rest of the meal. Amen? So uh, we end up taking up... Uh, uh, leftovers, and we take them home, so we have a secondary meal yes. later on. But Amen. it's never quite as good as the first. But that's not the way it is today, because I come to you not in the flesh, but come into you, coming to you in the Spirit Amen. of God. Amen. 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 So the, <clears throat> the passage that God uh, just put on my mind for this place is found in Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4, and we're going to start with verse 22. Acts chapter 4, verse 22. And here, this is uh, Peter and John got released uh, from, uh, they were uh, arrested because they had been in the temple and a miracle took place. And they released the power of God. Uh, you know, the guy that was at the gate, beautiful. And Peter walked by and this guy had been asking for alms from the church to get by and uh, uh, our Peter uh, and John they, they looked at him and said uh, you know silver and gold basically money we don't have but we got something uh -huh. and that which we have I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ rise and walk and he who had been uh, feeble from I think from, uh, from the birth uh, had sprung up and leaped and danced and pranced all about, and it really caused a commotion. And I'm telling you, folks, don't be worried when the Holy Spirit gets stirred up and causes a commotion. Yes, Come on, I want him to cause a commotion. I'm tired of the same old, same old, the mundane thing. I'm tired of that old thing. Uh, it's just word only. I want to see things get stirred up. I want to see signs and wonders. So when I walk out of the place, I wonder what was that all about. I like when God gets my attention. And he doesn't mind stirring things up. And boy, he stirred up that temple when they walked in. When that fellow was no longer asking for hands out, he got a hand up hallelujah and uh, so the church uh, seeing this uh, moved very quickly to arrest uh, John and Peter all right so uh, what I'm going to tell you here is uh, you will get the devil's attention if you stir up the Holy Ghost and you make a fuss and you release the power of God you'll know when you're releasing the power of God because the devil will come out of the woodwork but that's okay. Yes. That's okay. But one of his favorite tools and favorite weapons is to use the church to talk against what you just did. Amen? Amen? You look at any of the great revivals in times past, and it wasn't the world so much that was criticizing that. It was the mainline churches when they heard of such a thing, because, see, they hadn't been walking in that anymore, and they felt that that time is over. And it's not over, okay? It's not over. It was just over for them because they believed it was over. And then when they heard that thing happening, what do they do? They criticize. Uh, uh, you look at any revival, and you will find that the church out there will be used unwittingly by the enemy to speak against the move of God. It's throughout the Bible. You see a move of God, and who rises up against it? It's those unwitting people in the church that will move against it. So I'm telling you, be prepared for that. It's okay. God doesn't mind it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God doesn't mind it. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. And so here, the church had quickly come and arrested these fellas and commanded that they no longer preach in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Now, to me, that's what the devil was terrified about. Preaching and releasing in Jesus' name. Do you hear me? I said preaching and releasing. Today, tonight, I'm releasing, not just preaching. I'm releasing the anointing God. I'm telling you right now, there's a wave of the Holy Spirit that's knocking at your door and it's coming through that door and it's reviving you right now. And I command everything contrary to your health and everything else to be removed from your vessels right now. Yes. Satan, I command you in the name of Jesus to loose your hold in whatever way it is. Take your hand off of God's people wherever you you are stand up and be healed oh, hallelujah Yay, Lord. hallelujah Yay, Lord. Amen. so they were warning Peter and John to stop preaching in the name of Jesus and Peter said you judge whether it's right in the sight of God whether we should obey men or obey God but we cannot help but preach and release remember Amen. that which I have Woo! They've got a release there. That's what brought that brother up from his, uh, his infirmity. So it's preaching and releasing. Can you say that? Preaching and releasing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the divine order of God. That's the divine order that Jesus showed up with. He preached and he released. And he sent his church out to do the same thing. He sent them out by the 12 and he sent them out by the 70. Uh, the 70 he sent out and he said, preach and release. Did he not? And then they come back and they're rejoicing. Yeah. They're all happy. They said, man, even the devils are obeying us in your name. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then the New Testament church got a rocket start on the day of Pentecost. And that's what these fellows were walking in. This rocket start. That's what I call it. A launch off. Amen. Yeah. And I'm saying to you tonight, things are about to launch off. Oh, yeah. You may have been settling on the, the launch pad. You may feel like you're, you're this rocket ship has just been there and there's no thrust. There's no, but see, God, the countdown has already begun. The countdown has already begun. And God says it's going to light. And listen, you're not going to light it. God's going to light it. You're just going to be in the cockpit and be taken up yeah. where God wants to take you up. Now, yeah. come on. He's the one that releases fire. On the day of Pentecost, God sent his fire down. Man did. See, God, God sent his fire upon his church. It's God's fire. And I want the fire of God. How about you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So these brothers... They were preaching and they were releasing. And the church was persecuting them and threatened them. And so in this passage, they had been released. They said, we can't help but preach, teach, and do what we've seen and what we know. Amen. Amen. In other words, they were not going to give in to the resistance. They were not going to give in to the backlash. And I'm saying to you tonight, wherever you are, don't give in. Press in. Amen. Okay? When the wind blows, you press against the wind. Amen? Amen? You don't go back like this and let the wind blow you back. You just press in. Hallelujah. And listen, the more you begin to move in God, the stronger the oppositional wind will come against you. But that's okay because the one with you is greater than the one that's against you. The Bible says he who is in you is greater than he who's in the world. And you guys have got to know God's saying tonight, I'm great. Make up your mind to know I'm great. And the great one is with you. Have had Goliath had known that, that there was a greater giant on the battlefield with David, he would have not opened up his mouth like he did, but he cursed his own self and brought his own demise before my people because David knew that on the battlefield there was a greater giant. And that giant worked through that beautiful stone that reached that one little opening and knocked the daylights out of the devil. Shut his mouth. And I'm saying tonight, in the name of Jesus, yeah. you need to shut the yeah. devil's mouth. When the devil begins to speak, you need to silence him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Do not let him speak on the field of battle. But you speak and defeat by the spirit of the living God. Anything that the devil will try to rise up against you. Now in this passage here. The church. The a church that was ignorant to things. Was actually being used by the devil to speak resistance. To the spirit filled anointed church. That had those cloven tongues of fire fall on each one of them. And once that happened, that was the game changer of all games. Hallelujah. They cannot help but release the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Tonight, the Lord wants to tell you, my power is still at yes. work inside of you. My power is still at work inside of you. Get in touch with it. Get in touch with it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One of the ways you can get in touch with it is just begin to worship in tongues. Hallelujah. The Bible says he who wor worships in tongues edifies himself. In other words, the Holy Spirit just comes and starts to work on you. Amen. Hallelujah. When you, when you don't have anything to pray, you don't have anything to say, you better start speaking in tongues. And let me tell you something. If you're watching here and you've not got the baptism of the Holy Spirit, if you've not spoken in that heavenly language, I command in the name of Jesus you receive the fullness of God, the fullness of the Holy Spirit right now in the name of Jesus. I loose your tongues and I say be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the boldness of God. You need the Holy Spirit, especially in this day, especially in this age where the battle for mankind is fierce. My God, look around. Look at what's going on. You should take note. Hallelujah. These are troubling times and we need the power of the Holy Spirit. We need the glory of the Lord. Because when it's darkest, people are desperate to see the light. Amen. 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 So anyhow, they got released. Mm. Hallelujah. And here they go back to their to their prayer group. So Acts chapter four, verse twenty three. And being let go, they went to their own companions. Basically, they went to their prayer group. Remember, the group they went back to wasn't just a church group. It was a spirit-filled, on-fire, Holy Ghost-anointed church. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. These were the people from the upper room. Amen. They were there when the wind blew. When the sound of the mighty rushing wind came in and the cloven tongues of fire that set upon each one of them. Hallelujah. They were there when Peter rose up against the mockers and began to preach by the Spirit of God. And 3,000 souls received Jesus Christ right there on the spot. Hallelujah. That's the anointing, folks. And so when they went back to their companions, they went back to their prayer group. They got back with those that were steeped in the Holy Ghost. And that's what you need to do. You need to get with those who believe. You need to get those who have the Holy Ghost. Those that are not going to join with the words of the devil and say, Oh me, oh my, I don't know why that's happening. But it's an opportunity for you to release the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And so here in this passage, they go back to this anointed prayer group. And they reported all the chief priests and the elders had said to them, and it says in verse 24, So when they heard that, they raised their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, you are God who made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them, who by the mouth of your servant David said, Why do the nations rage and the people plot thing things? The kings of the earth took up their stand and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. The anointed one. Hallelujah. This is what I call a serious prayer group. Now come on. And I believe we got a serious prayer group here in this church, in this ministry. And I pray there's a serious prayer group that you join out there that know how to cut through to heaven regardless of the opposition that is around you, regardless of the darkness that surrounds you. You can cut right through. Hallelujah. And I say it's a cutting through night. 
Hira bara shali abando shile ando. Rande bere ato shodi ando re amanda ke. Rando shiri abano no ya heke ando. Mra shiri abano kaya. Ramo ya bato shiri ando re ama. Hada shiri. Sometimes the Holy Ghost just wants to take over and say a thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes you gotta learn to bow out and let the Holy Spirit take over. Come on now. Hallelujah. 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 And they go on to say in verse 27, For truly against your holy servant Jesus, and whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, were gathered together to do whatever your hand and your purpose determined beforehand to be done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The bottom line is the Spirit-filled church knows that no matter what's going on, who's in control? Amen. Come on now. Amen. You know, the devil thought he defeated Jesus on that cross. But we know that the Bible says he got disarmed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He would have never put the Son of God on that cross if he knew what it was going to bring. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There was a changing of the guard, let me tell you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now look at this. Verse 29. Now, Lord, look on their threats and grant to your servants with all boldness that we may speak your word. All boldness. That Greek word there is not the boldness that you get from being a man and being gutsy and big mouth and daring. All right? It's not that you should go out and stand in a bad section of town and just bellow something out because you're being bold. All right? Actually, if you do that, you're going to find out what your boldness leads to. Amen? This boldness that they're praying for is the same boldness that caused Peter to rise when the mockers drew near. That the devil sent them over there to accuse them that they'd been partying all night. And Peter rose up with the Holy Ghost boldness. That boldness is parousia. That parousia is that supernatural enablement by the Holy Spirit to be able to speak into this situation. You see, the devil came to mock, but Jesus came to rock. Hallelujah. The devil came. Joan, Secretary for Upper Room Ministry. You can see the rest of this message each Sunday evening, your local time. If you would like to receive our monthly newsletter and know the things the Lord is speaking to Prophet Humphrey, then please send a love offering to help cover our expenses. Also, if you would like to have an anointed prayer cloth and become a ministry partner, send us your picture so we can pray lay hands on you and your need and expect signs wonders and miracles in your life starting today you will never be the same our website is upperroomministry.net if you would like to schedule a speaking engagement contact our ministry all glory to jesus amen amen